morning, church. Let's stand as we worship together this beautiful Sunday morning. Sing with me. This is Resurrection Day. This is a Resurrection Day. The old life is gone. The new has come to stay. The sorrows of the past have turned into praise. This is a resurrection day. Come on. Come and find a new beginning. The river of God is a river of healing. Your sins are washed in this grave called baptism. Come and find a new beginning. We're alive with the one who is God, risen Son. Jesus Christ, Savior King, you have changed everything. This is a resurrection day. Hell's been defeated, death lost its sting, and everything that has breath is lifting up his name. This is a resurrection day. to greet your neighbors with the love of Christ. Give them a handshake or a hug. Welcome them to church this morning. as you make your way back to your seats, please remain standing as you're able. We're going to profess our faith all together using the words of the Apostles' Creed as our guide. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning, church. It's so nice to see all of you here this morning. If we haven't had the chance to meet yet, my name is Zach. I'm one of the pastors here at Covenant. Welcome to worship. If you're new to Covenant, especially warm welcome to you. We're so glad that you're here with us this morning uh, and worshiping with us on this beautiful Palm Sunday to kick off Holy Week. In the seat back in front of you, there are two cards. Uh, one of them is a prayer card, and that's there because we believe in God's power and will to answer the prayers of his children. And so we want to come alongside of you in the prayers of your heart, the joys, the concerns, the celebrations, and the trials. And so you can fill those cards out, and we would love to come alongside of you in that. The other card says, I'm new. If you are new to Covenant, um, that card is a great first step to begin exploring connection with our church family. You can offer up some contact information. Uh, we would love to connect with you, reach out, get to know you, and just start to build relationships because that is what church is all about. We build relationships with one another and with God in community. Both of those cards can be filled out and placed in the offering plate later in the service. I have two invitations for us this morning, and the first, as I already alluded, is that this is Holy Week. Um, this is one of my favorite weeks in the liturgical calendar, um, and we have a slate of services this week that are going to be just a really wonderful experience. I don't know if you have grown up um, recognizing Maundy Thursday and Good Friday as a part of Holy Week leading into Easter Sunday. I didn't. Um, but I wouldn't miss either of those services for the world. You could not pay me to miss these services. If you have not um, been a part of a culture, a church culture that recognizes these services, you should just come and try it out. It's wonderful. Um, the, the light of Easter is all the brighter for walking through uh, sort of the, the last words to his disciples of Jesus on Maundy Thursday and the remembrance of his death on Good Friday. Uh, and so all the information on the services is here on the screen, and it's also available on our website as far as timing um, and everything. I hope to see you there this week. The second invitation is that as a part of Holy Week this year, um, we are reading this altar Bible, the entire Bible, aloud over this sanctuary. This is something we did with this very Bible, uh, Holy Week of 2019, when we moved into this building and we're doing it again, um, and we have still plenty of slots available for you to be a part of reading this. Specifically, um, we need three people to sign up to read later tonight. Um, there's only three slots available today. It starts this afternoon. So this evening there are three slots. There are two slots in the first half of tomorrow um, that still need to be filled, and then a lot of openings on Thursday. Um, we, uh, this is just so awesome. I was talking with somebody who signed up um, to read this week. The best part is when you walk in and you're like, I wonder what part of the Bible I'm going to get to read. And you don't know until you get there because it just depends on the rest of your church family where they left off. Um, and so it's just so, so wonderful, such a rich, powerful experience. And so I invite you to sign up. You can sign up for multiple slots um, at this point, if someone misses out, it's their fault for waiting this long to register. So don't be shy. Sign up for as much as you want. That's it for invitations. Um, as we continue in worship, church, we're going to have a time of intercessory prayer. And this is a hard one. This is a hard one. On Monday, in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, there was another shooting. 
I'm sure you heard about it. Six people, um, six people were killed at the Covenant School in Nashville, which is affiliated with the Covenant Presbyterian Church. Uh, it was a former student. There were three adults and three three nine-year-olds. The kids' names were Evelyn Dykhaus, Hallie Scruggs, and William Kinney. Among the adults was the head of the school, Catherine Kuntz, the custodian, Mike Hill, and a substitute teacher named Cynthia Peak. So we're going to pray uh, the words from Psalm 38. And I'm just going to give us a little bit of silence so that you can prepare your heart in a spirit of intercession to, um, to be with these families in this community in prayer. And then we'll pray words from Psalm 38. As you're willing, please extend a hand in a spirit of intercession. I am bowed down and brought very low. All day long, I go about mourning. My back is filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. All of my, my longings lie open before you, Lord, and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart pounds, my strength fails me. Even the light has gone from my eyes. Those who want to kill me set their traps. Those who would harm me talk of my ruin all day long. They scheme and lie. I am like the deaf who cannot hear, like the mute who cannot speak. I have become like one who does not hear, whose mouth can offer no reply. O oh Lord, I wait for you. You will answer, Lord my God. For I said, do not let them gloat or exalt themselves over me when my feet slip. For I am about to fall and my pain is ever with me. Many have become my enemies without cause. Those who hate me without reason are numerous. Those who repay my good with evil lodge accusations against me, though I seek only to do what is good. Lord, do not forsake me. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly to help me, my Lord and my Savior. Amen. 
as we transition into worship, we know that the only way that we can step into worship is by fixing our eyes on him. So just have a moment to yourself to turn your attention to him. He's the author of our faith. The only way that we can have faith. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. We need you here. We choose to worship you. In times of joy and in times of pain. Because you are worthy. stand as you're able and let's continue in worship together. I search the world but it couldn't fill me a man's empty praise and treasures that fade were never enough then you came along Put me back together And every desire Is now satisfied Here in your love Oh, there's nothing Better than you There's nothing Better than you There's nothing Nothing is better than you. Not afraid. I'm not afraid. God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's this together. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the Shame 
the king of my heart be the mountain where i run the fountain i drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where i hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song you are good Never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. It's a promise. You're never gonna let, never gonna let you see it all. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down.
sing that because we believe it. When the night is holding on to me, God is holding on. You are good. You're good. face for him. You are good. Even when I cannot see. Even when we're not, you are good. Even when the world is not good. You are good. It's who you are. You're good because it's who you are. You are good. Heavenly Father, God, you are so good. God, we just thank you for loving us without condition we don't deserve it God you you try so hard you fight so hard for us to love us you pursue us with everything you have you never give up on us God you're always there and Lord we just pray Never, ever take that for granted. God, you're never going to let us down. Church, join me as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. This time, the kids are dismissed to go to Cove Kids to come around God's Word together.
Our scripture today is found in Luke chapter 19, starting in verse 28 and going through verse 40. So if you have your Bibles, I'd love for you to turn there with me. If not, the verses are going to be on the screen behind me. It's Luke chapter 19, starting in verse 28. After Jesus had said this, he went up on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, The stones will cry out. Would you pray with me? Well, God, we are thankful and we are grateful to get to come together and gather around your word uh, on Palm Sunday, God. And in this space, God, we just recognize your presence in this place with us. We recognize you here. And we pray that as we enter into this time of coming around your word, any hindrances that would keep our mind's attention and affection on you, would you just cast those out from us right now? And God, would you give us ears to hear and hearts to receive whatever it is that you have for each of us this morning? And I invite the Holy Spirit to do what only he can do, which is come into each of our hearts and draw us deeper and deeper into the Father's heart. So God, we love you and we trust you and we give you this time and we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, Well, as some of you know, but some of you in the room probably don't know, as I've mentioned before, I spent about three years of my life living in another country, specifically living in Honduras. And uh, that season of my life changed me tremendously and shaped me into the woman that I am today. But as I was preparing to go on this trek of not moving to a different city or a different state, but moving to a different country, uh, many of my friends and family and just people that I loved would commonly say one thing over and over again. Oh, Megan, don't worry. When you move, I'm going to come visit you. And I would look at them and say, yeah, yeah, you are. Because I, I, I knew and I understood the genuine intention that there was to maybe even soothe my aching heart as I'm about to leave what I've known uh, to go really into the unknown. But as most of you, maybe you've experienced this. Maybe you've moved to a different city or a different state, maybe in a, even a different country. Uh, oftentimes, the experience is genuine intention without follow through action. And so rather than to set myself or them up for disappointment, I would receive their good intentions and essentially just leave it at that. Like, that's so sweet. Thank you so much for saying that to me. 
Man, but I tell you, um, I, in the, in the almost three years that I was there, I was trying to count today, counting back, um, I had like 12 to 15 friends or family members come to Honduras in the time that I was there. They uh, spent their money, used their vacation days. Uh, my sister came with her two best friends on their college senior year spring break. You know, talk about a sacrifice, okay? They came to spend that with me, and that number excludes the 30 people that came from my hometown on mission trips to the organization that I was working for, and uh, that group of people specifically, uh, you want to talk about making sacrifices to come and visit. They learned how to make traditional and authentic tamales and sold them to fundraise $7,500 for the project cost to get to come and be a part of what I was doing there, and more importantly, what God was doing amongst the people of Honduras. And man, when I think about it and I reflect over that experience of, of really being wrong, <laughs> of having so many people come, I am blown away by the amount of people who went out of their way to make a way to me. They went out of their way above and beyond to make a way to me. And not just to me, to get to bless and be blessed by the people of Honduras and just be a part of the richness of what God was doing in that space. And today, as we look at our scripture, as we look at our text, the triumphal entry of Jesus, the beginning of what we now call Holy Week or Passion Week, I too believe that we are going to be struck in awe and wonder of a God who went out of his way to make a way to us. But unlike me, where I didn't have an expectation for people to actually come and to visit me and to see me in Honduras, uh, the people here in our scripture were long expecting Jesus to come. There was a long expectation for Jesus the Messiah to come and make a way to them and for them. And they were jubilant in response to his coming. The triumphal entry, the long-awaited entry of Jesus, not only for the disciples, but for everyone who was awaiting deliverance from Roman oppressors. They were ecstatic to see Jesus coming, fulfilling Old Testament prophecy, meaning that their deliverance was arriving at his hands. And many of them had just recently heard about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. So they knew what he was capable of. And they were eager to watch him do abundantly more as they delivered, as he delivered them from their oppression. And what a better time for Jesus to do this than during Passover. Passover. Passover was the first of three major Jewish feasts that were celebrated each year. The feast was to commemorate the deliverance of ancient, e ancient Israel from Egypt. The road from Jericho to Jerusalem was packed with thousands and thousands of pilgrims flooding into the capital city once a year to remember and celebrate Passover. So as, as these Jews went to remember their deliverance from oppressors in the past, they were longing for deliverance in their present. 
So in this account of Jesus' triumphal entry, before Jesus even enters the city, we see he sends two of his disciples to go and get a colt for him to ride in on. And what stands out to me as I'm, as I'm reading this account of Luke is the reason that Jesus gives to the disciples to say for needing the colt. He said, go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are untying it, say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, and as he had told them, as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they replied, the Lord needs it. The Lord needs it. Why? Why? Why does the Lord need the colt? Okay, because I understand, like, Jesus was fully man and fully God, so maybe his physical human body was tired, but yet on his trek to Jerusalem, he had already made stops that would have given the opportunity for rest. And in the path that he chose to go into Jerusalem was downhill, and so there, there wasn't a, a need for this colt because the rest of the path that he was walking was treacherous. So if he, if he didn't need it because he was tired, or he didn't need it for ease of travel, or, or any other real human ailment that could have, could have kept him from entering to Jerusalem, why does the Lord say when they ask you why? The Lord needs it. He needed it to fulfill prophecy. This story is one of a handful of accounts that we have of Jesus' life where in every single gospel, this same story is recorded. And I love that. <laughs> I love that because in my mind's eye and imagination, I am watching the disciples witness this, this event and, and then later recording down what happened in each of their personal accounts and in the details in which the Spirit gave them to write down and others not. It, it's this beautiful thing to imagine. But then as we bring all four of those count, accounts together, I believe we get this fuller picture, this fuller picture of what was actually taking place in this historic moment with Jesus. And so in the Matthew account of this entry, we see Matthew quote Zechariah 9, 9 in its entirety as the explanation for why the donkey was needed, a fulfillment of this Old Testament prophecy. And Zechariah 9.9 reads like this, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt the fowl of a donkey. And in the Mark account of this same event, we see Mark specified that the donkey that Jesus rode in on was a colt that had never been rid ridden before. And Mark adds the detail that Jesus would return the colt. I just personally love that little added detail because, God, we got a good God that even in this historic moment, he's going to use that colt and he's going to return it. He's going to bring it on back. I mean, if the, if, the people, if the people knew what was happening here, I'm sure they were like, no, Jesus, we're good. Like, you can, you can keep it, my man. But we got a good God who's a good man. But the cold itself had never been ridden before. And this was also an important detail because in, there was a rabbinic tradition that no one should use the animal 
on which the king was to use. And so in this moment, Jesus' ride in, this is his public declaration of being both Messiah and king of Israel by intentionally fulfilling the Old Testament prophecy and riding in on an animal who had never been used before. This quote from an academic journal called the Lexham Geographic Commentary on the Gospel shares the scene in this way. From Bethany, Jesus took the path up the ridge towards Bethphage and reaching the village sent two disciples into it to fetch a donkey and its colt. Mounting the colt, Jesus proceeded to the crest of the Mount of Olives, overlooking the city of Jerusalem and its temple mount. And as he drew close to the descent down the western slope of the mountain, the crowd of pilgrims erupted around him in praise and declared him the messianic king. So why did the Lord need it? Because we needed him and need him. The Lord needs it because we need him. And he knows we need to know who he is and how he meets our need. The people of the time then and us today needed to see proof Proof that the Lord is who he says he is. The people then and us now need to know that we have a God that went up and out of his way to make a way to us and for us. The Lord needed it because we need him. In this Making a way of Jesus, going out of his way to make a way to us and for us, is continuing, is continuing the narrative of Jesus as king being anything like the people expected him to. Because Jesus coming as king was humble, riding on a young donkey, not a war-raging tyrant strapped on a horse ready, ready for battle. He didn't come in with swords ablaze and chariots aplenty. He came in as palm branches were waving and his people were worshiping as he showed publicly that he was the promised Messiah and that the nature of his kingdom come is peace, is peace. In John's gospel account of this event, we see the specificity of palm branches being waved as the shouting of Hosanna or save us is happening. Palm branches are a sign of peace and victory in the Greco-Roman world. And people were not only waving these branches as Jesus was coming, but they were laying cloaks before him as the donkey would ride over as a sign of homage to royalty. That they would lay their garments down as Jesus would enter the king. What a parallel we see here of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem to Jesus' entry into the world. Jesus entered the world through the humble vessel of a young virgin birth. And, And people came from afar worshiping and came to lay gifts at Jesus' feet, recognizing him as the promised savior who was prophesied and promised to come. And finally, in Luke's account here, 
we see the Pharisees here at the end trying to get Jesus to rebuke the crowd for declaring that he was king. And Jesus ends up rebuking them by saying, if they were silent, the very stones would cry out. If these people were silent and not to give worship and honor and praise to the king that is Messiah, the very stones of the earth would have to erupt in praise. Jesus' entry was going to be triumphant whether the people declared him as king or not. And in times before this entry, as we watch, it, watch Jesus' ministry here, he was, he was kind of being low-key about being the Messiah. You know, there's stories of he would heal someone and be like, don't tell anyone. Or he would go over here and preach this awesome sermon. It's not time yet. He, he, that, was, that was kind of Jesus' deal. But no, he was saying the appointed time is now. Now is the time that we recognize Jesus as king, and the king has come. And so, since the time has come, let all of heaven, all of earth, all of the people, all of the grains, even the rocks of the earth of the past, let us all erupt in praise and welcome the king. This scene uh, makes me think of one of my favorite worship songs uh, called So Will I. And the entirety of this song lyrically is speaking over and over and over again about the glory of creation, how creation echoes the glory of God. And if creation will praise him, so will I. So will I. But even if I don't, it will. Creation will rise up in praise and display the beauty and splendor of the one that created it. Isaiah 55 Verses 12 through 13 talks about creation being our sign of the Lord's renown by saying this. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. Mountains and hills will burst into song before you. All the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper. And instead of the briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown. For an everlasting sign that will endure forever. Oh, that we would be a people that would join the stones, the rocks, the mountains, and the seas. Singing praise to the one who went out of his way to make a way for you and for me. That we would exclaim with creation that we too are created to display the beauty and splendor of the one who created us. That we would be a sign that the Lord's glory endures forever. We have a God who went out of his way to make a way for us. The Lord has come. The king has arrived. Let us praise him forever with our banner lifted high. Let's pray. God, what a beautiful truth to reflect on this day. Palm Sunday, when, when it was no longer at all a secret that you are king. And God, the, the beautiful scene of, of my mind's eye when, I, when I'm thinking about this coming and, and 
and all of the praise and honor and glory that was due your name, and yet you still chose humility. You still chose to ride in on a colt. And you did these things for us, not because we, because you needed it, but because we did. We needed to see and know the proof that you really are who you say you are. That you're a God who's trustworthy and true. That you are the long-awaited one that our hearts have been longing for. God, would we celebrate that truth today? That the king has come, the king has arrived. Oh, may we worship him. May we lift our banner high. And as we continue this morning, I pray over this offering, this offering that we are about to receive. May uh, this offering be used to continue the blessings in the ministry in the life of covenant. And so, Father, you are good. You are a good God who is trustworthy and true. A God who made a way, went out of his way to make a way for us. So, Father, we love you and we trust you. And we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus. of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, oh, praise Him, hallelujah. Thou burning sun with golden beams, thou silver moon with softer gleams.
Church, we're going to sing one last song together this morning. Let's stand and worship. Our God, our God, a firm foundation, our rock, the only solid ground, the nations rise and fall, kingdoms, kingdoms once strong now shaken, we trust forever in your name, the name of Jesus, we trust. We trust the name of Jesus. We are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift higher. We are the only king forever. Forevermore, you are the glory. He's unmatched, unmatched in all your wisdom, in love and justice you will reign, and every knee will bow. We bring our expectations. We bring our expectations, our hope is anchored in your name, the name of Jesus, and we trust.
so good. As today is the beginning of Holy Week, I wanted to have an invitation before the benediction. Uh, the invitation being that there is an app called Easter Now that you can download, and throughout the week, it will give you notifications as what was happening through Holy Week is happening. And so it is an awesome way to continue to set your mind's eye and your heart's affection to walking through the fullness of Holy Week. Receive now this benediction. Oh God, we go forth from this place recognizing that you are truly the only king forever. And so God, would we be a people that lift our banner high over and over again, recognizing you, Jesus, as king. So Father, we love you and we trust you and we pray all of these things in the name of King Jesus. Amen. Go in peace.